Christ, Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shah, Bahashim, Rekai Kodash, double honors to my teachers, the apostles, and elders of Great Millstone. Much respect to the brothers laboring worldwide in truth and in sincerity, and salutations and blessings to the hopeful elect, believing on the words of Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shah. Title of this lesson is simply going to be the plagues. Okay? It's how about Shah Shah bringing the calamity of Esau upon him. Let's get that. <clears throat> and that's what we're seeing. All right. Happen on a mass scale. And I have a, a couple of articles queued that I want to share. All right. Showing us the prophecies are coming to pass. The Lord is, you know, fighting on our behalf. This is Jeremiah, <clears throat> excuse me, chapter 49. We're going to start at verse 7. It says, prophesy against Edom. All right. It says, Jeremiah 49 and 7, concerning Edom. Thus say of the Lord of hosts, is wisdom no more in teeming? Is counsel perish from the prudent? Is their wisdom vanished? So the Lord asked a series of questions here. All right. He's letting you know that he's the one who's taking away the wisdom. All right. The counsel, the understanding of this damn devil. He's drying up their source. All right. Is that uh, Ezekiel 17 down in the uh, end of the chapter where the Lord say he's drying up the green tree where well, they're losing their wisdom, right? Verse 8, it says, Flee ye, turn back, dwell deep, O inhabitants of the Dan, for I will bring the calamity of Esau upon him the time that I will visit him. And that's what we're seeing. The Lord Yahweh is bringing the calamity of Esau upon him. All right. So much so that you have these certain homeless camps set up all around the country. All right. And I actually found an article where the Lord, the Spirit led me to an article regarding uh, homelessness of Interstate 2059. Heading toward Tuscaloosa, Alabama, all right, which is like 45 minutes away from where we are in Birmingham, all right? But again, these things are not just happening in, in your big cities. Guess what? They're now coming in here, you know, to the so-called small cities, to the southern states, all right? Again, this is the Lord bringing the calamity of Esau for him, matter of fact. Let's get that word, calamity, right? <clears throat> Real quick. All right, Strong's H three forty three. And it says distress, burden, calamity, right? It says burden of the righteous. Calamity of a nation. See, the Lord is bringing the calamity, all right, upon this nation, this wicked kingdom. It says disaster of the wicked. See that? Let's go down here to the Strong's. It says in the sense of bending down. Yeah, the Lord told the damn devil to come down and sit in the dust, right? Oppression by implication, misfortune, ruin. You see that? It's a series of uh, uh, a misfortune coming to you, Esau. All right. Now, I have this article right here that I want to share. And uh, I get certain feeds from the New York Times. And uh, this allows me to be able to look at more articles that they put out instead of, you know, having their subscription. All right, now it says, um, <laughs> good morning, right? 
America's homelessness crisis is getting worse. See that? So, Lord, hey, come on, man. It says, and, and you see it in the background, see the, the, the tent cities, you know? It said uh, Oakland don't even look the same, man. You know, these certain cities in the West. So let's, let's read a little bit of it. It says, a housing shortfall, America's homelessness problem has the making of a acute crisis. Let's look at this word acute. That's what they use to describe the crisis. It says, ooh, look at that. It says, of, of a bad, difficult, or unwelcome situation. <laughs> Or phenomena, you see that? Let's let's open this up. It says <laughs> of a bad, difficult, or unwelcome situation or phenomenon, present or experienced to a severe or intense degree. See that? It's going to be a severe homelessness, man. Let's go back to this article. So we got that word acute. Okay, a, 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 a difficult crisis, basically. Let's go back. Some of the similar words, severe, critical, drastic, dire, dreadful, terrible, awful, grave. Woo! All great words concerning this kingdom being put in this place, man. So America's homelessness, it says America's homelessness problem has the making of an acute or dire, right, crisis. Shelters across, and see, this ties in. I, I did a video uh, the other day regarding uh, people now having to more and more increasingly go to these food banks, man, all right, because of this 40-year inflation, right, uh, uh, you know, 40-year high inflation, I think it's at like 9%. Hey, the Lord is really working, man. If you got eyes to see, you 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 understand what season you're in. It says shelters across the U.S. are reporting a surge in people looking for help, with the waiting list doubling or tripling in recent months. The number of homeless people outside of shelters. Is also probably rising, experts say. Some of them live in encampment, which have popped up in parks and other public spaces in major cities from Washington, D.C. to Seattle since the pandemic began, see? So now these major cities, guess what? It's trickling down to these so-called not major cities, all right? Like I said, I got an article that I want to share regarding a tent city that popped up off 2059 here in the Tuscaloosa. It says the inflation is compounding the problem. Rent has increased at its fastest rate since 1986, putting houses and apartments out of reach for more Americans. See that? Let's, let's read this next one. It says, see, man, the Lord, the crisis means more people do not know where they will sleep tonight. Living in the streets, people are exposed to more crime, violence, and bad weather, including extreme heat. Now, you notice this country, all right, as in, uh, I, as also uh, the UK has been under extreme heat, right? It says they can lose their job in the chaos of homelessness and they often struggle to find another way without access to the internet or a mailing address. There's a certain posture that you take when you are homeless, right? Ivan Perez who lived in a tent in Los Angeles told the Times, you lose your dignity. Wow. Amen. 
And but why is these things are happening? Why are these things occurring? Well, these scourges is for amendment. All right, the Lord is trying to get our people, you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, to consider. All right, because the times we're coming into, it's going to be horrific, man. All right, and if you don't have your hot by shower shower on your side, you're just going to be caught out there. Okay, now Lord will and I leave this link in the description box. All right, it's a pretty good read, but the first couple of paragraphs is all we need. All right, to show the Lord is bringing the calamities of Esau upon him. Right now, I have this second article. Okay, and it says. Tent City grows near Interstate 2059 in Tuscaloosa. See? So this ain't just relegated to these so-called uh, major cities, man. All right? This is, this is going on throughout Babylon the Great. All right? Now, they, they, they interviewed a guy. And I don't too much want to read, you know, what this guy said about the situation of being homeless the, the the title the headline says it all right tent city grows near interstate 2059 in tuscaloosa right well that's the lord just you know having babylon come down and sit in the dust and lord willing will get that you know he's uh he's he's, he's performing his words matter of fact let's get that Let's go to the book of Lamentations, chapter 3, and I want to say 36, 37, Salakia. This is Lamentations, chapter 3, and verse 37. Who is he that saith, and it cometh to pass, when the Lord commandeth it not? So the Lord has commanded the fall. Of Esau Edom, all right, in his kingdom. The Lord has decreed it. And now we're in the season of those things becoming manifest. This is Jeremiah chapter 51 and verse 6. Flee out of the midst of Babylon and deliver every man his soul. Be not cut off in her iniquity, for this is the time of the Lord's vengeance. See that? It was a particular season, a particular time that the Lord set up to bring his vengeance upon Babylon the Great, a.k.a. America. It says he will render unto her a recompense. Yeah, this matriarch system. All right. But Esau puts the woman above the man. All right. It says Babylon have been a golden cup in the Lord's hand that have made all the earth drunken. The nations have drunken of her wine, therefore the nations are mad. See that? These nations are mad. They have went with the philosophy of America. You know, they set up their uh, monetary system like America. They have these uh, different, uh, what is that, central banks, right? But guess what? Now the nations are seeing this whore for what she really is. And guess what they're doing? All right, they're trying to separate from them, right? You got what the uh, bricks said, the bricks, right? These conglomerate of nations who's uh, forming their own trade so they can get away from under the petrodollar. Yeah. It says Babylon is suddenly fallen and destroyed. How for her? Take bond for her pain. If so be, she may be here. That's right. And the Lord is being facetious. All right? He, he's uh, <laughs> telling you that this place cannot be healed. Because it's the Lord that's bringing the plague. It's the Lord that's, that's causing the calamity to come. All right? Scripture tells you he wound and he heal. Right? Neither is there any that can deliver out of his hands. So you are in the hands of Yahweh Bashar Shah Esau. Right? It says, we would have healed Babylon, but she is not healed. Forsake her. Let us go everyone into his own country for her judgment reach up unto heaven and is lifted up even to the skies. That's right. 
the Lord now is looking down upon the sinful kingdom, all right, to destroy it off the face of the earth. You damn Edomites, man, where well, you have perpetuated wickedness across the whole planet, right? Isaiah chapter 47 and verse 1, as you see, lament for Babylon, right? And lament means what? Weep bitterly. Let's get that word. Just a quick Google definition. All right, because as our apostles and elders have taught us, man, to look up these words, you'll get a deeper understanding of what the scripture is trying to relate to you. Lament, a passion expression of grief or sorrow. <laughs> mourn. So mourn for this whore. You you people. All right. We're gonna we're gonna be joyous. Because we're in mourning now, man. We have to, to sit in this damn captivity and look at all the abomination. Right? That's why we're crying out. But this is Isaiah chapter 47 and verse 1. Come down and sit in the dust, O virgin daughter of Babylon. Who is this virgin daughter of Babylon? Let's get a quick piece of believe that song. <clears throat> One thirty-seven. Who is this virgin daughter of Babylon? Right. This is uh Psalms chapter one thirty-seven and verse seven. Remember, O Lord, the children of Edom in the day of Jerusalem, who said, Raise it, raise it, even to the foundation thereof. O daughter of Babylon, see that O daughter of Babylon, who ought to be destroyed? So the children of Edom, Esau, Edom, all right, are the daughter of Babylon, all right, whose whose destiny is to be destroyed. The son of perdition. It says, "Happy shall he be that reward of thee, as thou hast served us." That's right. So this daughter of Babylon, all right, it is um, associated with Edom. Okay. So back in Isaiah 47 and 1, come down and sit in the dust, O virgin daughter of Babylon, sit on the ground, there is no throne, O daughter of the Chaldeans, for thou shalt no more be called tender and delicate. And this is an example. Tent cities across America. All right. This once delicate, so-called delicate woman, right? Is, is, is you now seeing her for what she is, that filthy, nasty whore, right? It says, take the millstone and grind mill, uncover thy locks, make bare the leg, uncover the thigh, pass over the river. Yeah, the Lord is exposing you. Thy nakedness shall be uncovered, see that? Yeah, thy shame shall be seen. I will take vengeance and I will not meet there as a man. See, the Lord is now, all right, looking down again upon the sinful kingdom, all right, and bringing the calamities of Esau upon him, all right, from the financial, all right, to the, to the housing, to, to the, um, what is that, the, uh, the infrastructure, these bridges, these roads. That's all of the Lord doing doing to bring this 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 whore down to her knees right it says again isaiah 47 and 3 thy nakedness shall be uncovered yeah thy shame shall be seen i will take vengeance and i will not meet thee as a man see the lord is coming back as an angelic power all right to render his anger and his fury will rebuke of flames of fire Okay, again, <laughs> look, it's all over the country. It's not just, uh, again, relegated to um, to these certain major cities. No, all right? And that's the Lord bringing the calamity of Esau upon him. This is the book of Baruch, chapter 4, and... Mm, yeah, let's start at 27. Be of good comfort, O oh my children, and cry unto the Most High. And that's what you're seeing us doing. We cry for the abomination. We cry by way of the oppression. 
for ye shall be remembered. See that? For ye shall be remembered of him that brought these things upon you. And we understand we are in this hell because of our disobedience, right? For as it were, excuse me, for as it was your mind to go astray from the Most High, so being returned, seek him ten times more. That's right, diligently, man. All right, why? So we can be protected, preserved from the said perils. It says, for he that have brought these plagues upon you shall bring you everlasting joy and salvation. Right, we're mourning right now, but the Lord says he's going to bring us everlasting joy with your salvation. Let's read this again. Group 429, for he that have brought these plagues upon you shall bring you everlasting joy with your salvation. That's right. You see? Take a good heart, O Jerusalem, for he that gave thee that name will comfort thee. How is the Lord comforting us? Through the scripture. All right? Letting us know the intents and the plans of his heart. All right? It says, miserable are they that afflicted thee and rejoice at thy fall. Miserable are the cities which thy children serve. Miserable is she that received thy sons in America, Babylon, the great is miserable. Right? For as she rejoiced at thy ruin and was glad at thy fall, so shall she be grieved for her own desolation. See that? For I will take away the rejoicing of her great multitude and her pride shall be turned into mourning. That's right. These people pride, all right, is turning into mourning. You see that? They're, they're, they're not uh, in mirth anymore, okay? But they don't know where their next paycheck coming from. They don't know when they're going to eat again. They don't even have a, a, an abode. See? Let's go here. St. John, chapter 16, and I'm going to start at verse 16. Yahweh Shai's death and resurrection foretold. St. John, chapter 16 and 16, for a little while, and ye shall not see me, and again, a little while, and ye shall see me, because I go to the Father. Then said some of his disciples among themselves, What is this that he saith unto us? A little while, and ye shall not see me. And again, a little while, and ye shall see me. And because I go to my father, they said, Therefore, what is this that he saith a little while? We cannot tell. What he saith. Now Yahweh knew that they were desirous to ask him and said unto them, Do ye inquire among yourselves of that that I said a little while, a little while, and ye shall not see me, and again a little while? And ye shall see me. Verily I say unto you. That ye shall weep and lament. All right? Cry bitterly, man. Be in sorrowful times. We're in sorrowful times now. Right? We're, we're, we're hastening the day for our Savior to come back and deliver us and destroy this wicked ass place. It says, verily, verily, which means truly, truly. I say unto you that ye shall weep and lament, but the world shall rejoice. Yeah, they've been in rejoicing, right? They've, they've, they've been, all right, uh, happy in this wicked kingdom, right? And ye shall be sorrowful, but your sorrow shall be turned into joy. See that? Our sorrow is turning into joy, okay? Why? Because the Lord is bringing the calamity of Esau upon him. See that? 
the Lord is, is truly doing a, a, a mighty work in the earth. So I pray this has been edifying and comforting. I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Rakat Kodash. Double honors to my teachers, the apostles, and elders of Great Millstone. Much respect to the brothers laboring worldwide in truth and in sincerity. And salutations and blessings to the hopeful elect. Leaving on the words of Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Shalom, DTA, and Ababa Baba. Shalom.